All right, guys, we're going to give this a try. Adding swirl to a pent roof. We had multiple guys say that uh, can't do it. Why would you do it? It'll ruin your volumetric efficiency. Okay, let's get some basics taken care of. Okay, we're used to doing wedge stuff. Terrible picture. Sorry. I only have good artistic work with iron, I think. Comes down, remember, wedge is only, you know, the intake is on one side, the exhaust is on the other side. So it's always going to swirl like a corkscrew into your bore. Okay. What's nice about swirl, though, is what happens to the swirl when your piston's coming up? It actually speeds up, okay? Interested, keep that in the back of your mind, okay? Especially if you make the chamber the right shape, it really, it'll really kick it. Now, a regular pent roof works on tumble, okay? You come in and she tumbles this way. It's great for efficiency as far as bringing in a huge amount of air, but what happens to this turbulence when your piston comes up? It gets quenched. It doesn't have much mixture motion, right? A lot of pent roof, hemi style engines have problems as far as flame front speed at lower RPMs due to this. I'll never forget. I was I was very young and I was at a car show, and it was a DZ three hundred two that was actually stroked to three eighty three. I noticed it had a, a externally balanced uh, front crank uh, balancer. And right next to it was a 426 Hemi and they were revving them up. And you know, the 383 revved right up. And the Hemi, even though it sounded great, didn't, didn't go wing, wing. It went Rrrr. It was, a, and I noticed it and I was, I was like, what causes one to rev fast and one to, to not? Well, the swirl is part of it. The quench is the other part, okay? On our wedge style chamber, we had a lot of quench and we really push the air fuel towards the plug, okay? Hemis or pent roof don't really have much of that. If it's designed right, it'll push it all towards the center and you have your plug in the center, and that works really well. You know, the modern pet roof is night and day over the original single plug Hemi. Okay, so we know we have our tumble, we have our swirl. Here, this is a standard tumble pet roof, okay? Looking from the top down, right? We have two equally sized runners all equally sized, uh, you know, intakes are going to be the same size and your exhaust is going to be the same size. You get about the same amount of flow on each side. Okay, all you're going to get is your tumble this way. Okay, let's go to DV's polyquad. Let me make sure I've got you in the, in the picture. It looks like you can see that, I think. Let me see. Yeah, I can see my hand. Okay. What DV does is he has a large intake valve and a small intake valve. A small exhaust valve, a large exhaust valve, and he feeds one with a large port, one with a small port, okay? And what he's doing is, as it's going through its cycle, it's going to do, it's going to do something like this, but it's not, it's not completely this. It's not completely swirl because it still has its tumble in there. Uh, I forget what he calls it. He calls it something something else. He combines the two terms, but what you're doing is you're putting an act an act. <sighs> Can't think of it. Sorry, guys. Instead of it being a swirl like this, okay, it's combined with the tumble motion, so it's doing both at the same time. Okay, not as much of a corkscrew, but it does have some corkscrew attributes. So when the piston comes back up, there will still be some motion from that swirl. 
Okay, that was the, the theory behind DV doing this. And he made a lot of power with the pent roof uh, polyquad, especially when he turbocharged. I think he did a Mitsubishi, made it 13 or 1400 horsepower in like two liters. So this is a long time ago, too. I like, I like the whole idea of this, but to actually do a polyquad is tough for me because I don't have the seat and guide machine. So I like to attack it in a little bit different manner. Let me pause you guys. Okay, I think we're back on. Okay, without changing the size of the valves, if you just change, I shouldn't even say it that way. You make one port work way better at the high lift. The other port, you keep more or less almost stock. You improve it, but you don't improve it the same amount as you improve this one, okay? So what will actually happen is at the very low lift, this will actually flow better than this one. And then at some point in the lift curve, this one will be flowing a lot more than this one. So in the beginning, you'll, you'll, you'll be going around in a clockwise fashion, and you'll finish in a counterclockwise, counterclockwise fashion. That's going to give you a very turbulent charge, especially when they, they really, they're really going to start mixing. There's also a couple other ways I thought of doing this. Let's pause here. Okay, what if you did something like this? Put a 30 degree valve job on one valve and put a 50 degree valve job on the other. Would that work? One's gonna flow a lot better at the low lift. The other one's gonna flow a lot better at the high lift. Do I know what's gonna happen? No, I'm just gonna kind of throw out ideas out tonight because it's way too hot to work in a garage. Let's see what else we can think up and uh, mix people up. Now I'm just kind of brainstorming. What if you put your divider that's usually dead center and move it way over? What do you think is going to happen? You're definitely going to get more flow this way than this way. That might actually be a really good design because it won't it won't reverse the two the two flow the two swirls, right? That might actually work really well. Now, if you wanted to combine that with a DV polyquad, I could see that working even better. Or, you make this a 30 and that a 50, and polyquad it. There's so many different ways you could go about this. Now, the one thing I'm going to warn anyone that's thinking about doing something like this, is it is going to change your, your spark curve. No question about it. And the little, the little four valve one I did uh, for, the mo for the scooter, I have to tell, tell that customer, uh, he's going to have to take a good look at his timing curve. Very good chance he will need less timing now than it did originally. Interesting, interesting to think of, right? Less timing usually tells you, is you burn faster or is you burn slower? Okay. Interesting thought I had. Okay, let's say we do something like this design. And we're initiating a counter, counterclockwise for you old timers, counterclockwise swirl in there. Could you actually do something with the exhaust ports that would help it exhaust? Because conservation of energy, you're gonna you're gonna keep that little bit of swirl. So it's gonna burn and when it starts exhausting, it's still going to be spinning, all right? You can actually get better exhaust flow through a bigger port on this side than this side. Let me think, uh, you know what? I don't know what else I'm going to include on this. Be sure to give me a comment what you thought about this. I know, I know my buddy Tom will be thrilled to see a whiteboard. Uh, this is the first time I've used this whiteboard in the house. We used to have them all over the house. We even had full-size ones. Yeah, we were that kind of family. Um, pent roof is interesting stuff. Uh, I like it. I really don't like, like, five-valve stuff. <laughs> Especially if they have the valves at different angles and stuff. What a mess. Four valves is more than enough work. 
especially on small stuff. Ugh, terrible. Okay, but you get excellent, you get excellent breathing, and then if you add a little swirl to it, I believe you'll get a better burn out of it. Now, I don't have any dyno proof. I don't have anything like that. But as far as theory, I think it works. And we will find out when the little, uh, that little scooter head makes it out of the house. It's actually packed. This is going to be a tough week to even ship it out, to be honest. Uh, thanks for hanging out, guys. Have a good night.